Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome to part two of my Hawker Hurricane Let's Build series or Build With Me series. This is a longer form video where I build this in a slower format so that if you've got one of these kits at home you can build it at the same time as me. In the previous episode I covered off the basics of plastic kit construction and we focused on the internal cockpit areas of the Hawker Hurricane from Airfix. So join me in the second part as I focus on the main construction of the rest of this aircraft. Naturally, if you haven't seen the first episode, that would be the perfect place to start, and then you can come back to this one afterwards. So having completed these steps in the previous video, there is something that we need to do first, and there is a clear part that needs to go in this hole here. As covered in the previous episode, I'm going to be using my snips and my knife to remove the plastic parts, and then sanding them with my sanding stick. So for more information on how to do that, make sure you check out the original one. My snips are too big to get into that gap there. There we go, so that's now off. And we'll just trim that bit up. So clear parts, there's something you need to remember with clear parts is that the glue that's included, so this one here, this poly cement, does run the risk of causing the plastic parts to fog up. It makes them go white and then you can't see through them anymore, which is a bit of a pain. There are a number of different products out there which you can use to prevent this from happening, such as PVA glue or clear general purpose glues. But I'm going to use this um, product here purely because I bought it and I wanted to try it out. This is Clear Fix. This is a clear drying glue from Humbrol. Again, if you don't have this and you don't have anything else, like even PVA, then you can use the poly cement that's included, it will just do the same job, but it might fog up your clear parts. So use a very tiny amount of it. Pop it on a cocktail stick and then just run it around the outside of the hole. That's that done. Now it's time to place the part. And apparently the triangular bit points forwards. So we'll get that in place and then use the tweezers, there we go. Press it down, and after a few minutes that glue will be holding it firmly in place. Let's now join the two fuselage halves together. And just like I did with the wings in the previous episode, I'm going to test fit to make sure that I don't need to move anything around. There are some little locating pins and holes to help join everything up. But as you can see, it seems to be all lined up right. The, uh, the stuff on the inside, the cockpit stuff, I've got that in the right place, so everything's good there. Obviously, if this was not quite in the right place, you'd have to move it around a little bit, just give it a nudge forwards or whatever to get it sitting correctly. So what I'm going to do now, take my poly cement, and I'm just going to run a small amount of it over these areas here, just to get going. Come on. And that is it. So, again... Just like in the previous episode, if you don't want to get gluey fingers, maybe wearing gloves might be a good choice, or just be super careful. So this might need a little bit of pressure to hold it together as the glue dries. Any excess that seeps out, just quickly wipe it away, and clean your fingers so you don't leave any fingerprints on anything else later on. As mentioned in the previous video, if you did go out and get yourself some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, Running that along the seams here is really going to help. It's going to flow into those gaps. And if you press them together, it's going to get a lovely bond between them. If obviously you don't have this, don't worry too much. Just make sure you hold the plastic parts together until they are completely dry. With that done, I'm going to sand these seams just like I did before, but I'm not going to use my sanding stick because I need something a little bit more flexible. I've got some uh, 400 grit sandpaper here and I'm just going to very carefully run it along those seams there. 
It'll just help hide them a little bit, hide the fact that we've glued it together. And on the nose. And underneath as well. You could use your sanding stick here, it wouldn't really be too much of an issue. But just be careful you don't remove any of those nice details that are on the model. And the next step is to join our lower wing to our fuselage. So again I'm just going to check that it aligns. You've got to be careful because we've got these sticking up uh, details here now. So it's a matter of getting them all aligned properly. It's now that I realise why they said put the uh, pilot in at the end. Because this is in the way of the pilot. So I wonder if I can take him out for the time being. Oh yeah, he's still not dry. There we go, let's give him a little... Let's see if we just take him out for a minute. Get that in place, and then we'll put him back in afterwards. So that's an error on my part. So if you did that in the last episode, just be aware that you might have to do that as well, and then put him back in. But yeah, so that fits now. Let's get some glue around that. Run it around the seams. Oh, there's too much there. This is the problem with this glue. You squeeze too hard, you're going to get too much out. We'll just remove that. Where's my cocktail stick? Remove that off of there. Too much there. There we go. Pop that on there. Carefully. There it is. Press it down. Make sure we've got a good bond. And I'll put some more glue in there. Then we'll put the pilot back in. That was a silly mistake, wasn't it? But this is it, isn't it? People make mistakes. Is he going to go in there now? Now that the uh, control column is in there. Yes, very careful. You have to be very careful to get him in. He doesn't quite fit otherwise. There we go. Right, problem solved. With that done, if we flip over the model, there we go, we're now going to add the lower part of the fuselage there. It's got the tail wheel housing. Not all models have this sort of design. I'm pretty sure that Airfix have done this on this um, model because the Hawker Hurricane had a slightly different version of this area on the very early version of the Hurricane. And there is a kit from Airfix which represents that. But this is the slightly later version of the Hurricane Mark 1. So it has a slightly different version of this. Let's put that on there nice and careful. There we go. And again, just hold it in place until the glue starts to dry. The rudder is the next bit to go on. So we'll run a little bit of glue down there. And then get that on there. If you really wanted to, you could position this like at a different angle. You know, as, as rudders were designed to swing from left to right like that. You could, if you wanted to, position it off centre. But I'm going to go for the central position. And then what we need to pop on is the horizontal tail surfaces. And they just slot into these little holes here, just like that. Easy enough to do. It is worth checking these um, horizontal surfaces are completely level when you've put them in, just to make sure they're not drooping down to one side or the other. There we go. I'm just going to put that to one side for a moment because we've got a sub-assembly to do, which is the sort of air intake and radiators. So this has got some sort of vents or panels inside of it which I'm just going to add so that one pops in there yeah, they've got sort of locating marks on the back which go into those little slots so just push them in together and the same with this one that will go in its little slot let's get our tweezers out probably a bit easier with tweezers like that get it in nice and straight There we go. 
and I am going to paint these very quickly with the Humbrol 33 matte black that came included in the set just so that it's done because when I come to add the next bit just get a quick layer of that on there I might actually seeing as I've got that silver do a little bit of dry brushing on it just to bring out those nice details there so we'll do that one and we'll do the one on that side as well there we go a little bit more paint I'm going to do the inside of the vent as well because if I don't paint it now it will be hard to do it later it doesn't really matter at that point then cool so this is the uh, the other bit that's going to go on the front so I'm just going to paint the inside of that And I'm going to just dry brush this silver paint on just like I did in the previous episode removing the excess paint on a paper towel and then just dry brushing the uh, the residue over the top there we go that looks quite nice do it on both sides this is not really going to be visible later but at least I'll know I've done it now we can add the front onto there and a bit of glue around the outside and then pop it on make sure you get it the right way around it should be flat end or flat side pointing up and then it joins it like that that's how it should be there we go just push it together and hold it there until the glue dries and then that is going to go on to the bottom of our aircraft. So if we pull our aircraft back and flip it over, you can see that there are these two holes here, these two slots rather, on the bottom of the model. So I'm going to add or run a little bit of glue around the edges of the assembly we've just done and in the grooves there flip it over and then pop it into its grooves there that's it you should just slot in and that's it that's your air intake and radiator done whilst i'm on this side of the aircraft there's these little holes here which have a part that needs to go in it and that's sort of like another little air intake so we'll pop that in place in its holes whilst we're here come on in you go a little bit fiddly that there he goes he's in there now and still on the bottom of the model we have a tail wheel that needs to go into that hole there so again a little bit of glue And then make sure you get this tail wheel the right way around. It should be sort of pointing backwards. And then it just slots in there. Done. Should be pointing backwards like that. There is a small detail that needs to go in this hole here on the bottom left wing of the model. So a little bit of glue in there. And then we pop that in with the sort of longer stalk into the hole and the shorter one out. I think this is a pitot tube and it, it does something to sort of detect air pressure and altitude or something like that. So it's like a it's like an aircraft sensor thing more than anything. I'm adding it now purely because the um nothing's painted and it'll be easier at this stage. Obviously in the future when you when you get you develop your skills a bit more you might decide to add these small details towards the end of the build purely because handling your model now with all these small details on you have to be super careful that you don't knock them off by accident but i think the last small detail i'm going to add on the bottom is this sort of pipe work here and that needs to go into the holes 
in here so a little bit fiddly with that one so I'm probably going to put the cement on the part and then it sort of has to you have to work your way through and into the holes flipping over to the top there's a small detail which needs to be put into this slot which is the aerial support mast so we'll pop that in making sure that the sort of sticky out bit for the aerial wire goes backwards towards the tail later on at the end of the build we might add some aerial rigging between these two points well between that point there and that point there the kit does come with these parts here for the uh, landing gear to display the aircraft flying if like me however you want to build it down we're going to use these bits uh, probably in the next episode along with the separate doors and the separate wheels which also come on the sprues um, because I think that adding them now and then trying to paint them whilst they're on the model will be much much too difficult so that will probably be part of the next video but before we call it a day on this video let's assemble the propeller if we're careful with our glue we should be able to turn it by hand when we've finished so the first thing I'm going to do is add some glue to this back plate because the propeller itself is going to attach to that. Now we need to make sure we've got this the right way round and there are some little markings on this side which I'm going to go ahead and presume means it goes on like that. Over the top of that we're going to put our spinner which is the nose cone part Again, a bit more glue, and then we push that over the top, and it should help keep it all neatly aligned on that side there. And now we're going to push the retaining pin through this sort of mounting block, like that, so we've got it sticking out at this end. Then we're going to put a little bit of glue on our pin and the pin is going to go into our propeller and push it all together hopefully that means that this sort of block allows you to rotate it freely so if I hold the, the block we should be able to do that so the whole point of that is when we push that inside the nose of the aircraft later we glue this part this part here and not the pin so we glue this bit into there and then we should still be able to turn it but you know careful with your glue because it might not work if you're not careful all that's left to go on the model are the clear parts which we'll do right before the end and the engine exhausts and the landing gear parts because it'll be much easier to paint them separately but other than that the build of the model is probably about 90% hmm, complete I would say so at this point now you should have a mostly assembled model kit ready for the next step which will be painting which I will see you in the next video for just as a side note, I've been working on this model kit now for about four hours. Obviously through the power of editing, I've been able to reduce that down a bit. So the first episode was about two hours and then this was about an hour and a half. So there or thereabouts, depending on uh, what I do in between. Most of that time though is taken up just by waiting for paint and glue to dry. So yeah, like I said in the uh, first episode, if you haven't got patience, you will have patience by the end of this. But anyway, that's it for this one. In the next one, more painting. So if you'd like to see that one, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this and you found it helpful. And let me know, are you building a model like this at the moment? Did you find this video helpful? And are there any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see in the future? Massive shout out to my patrons and channel members on Patreon and YouTube for their massive support because their support helps me to continue make videos on a regular basis. To find out more about how you could get involved in that, take a look at the links in the description. Whilst you're in the description box, you'll find links to my other social media accounts as well. 
Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this video, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time. I mean, you can already see the contrast between the two wings. This wing looks almost ready to go. Work it into the details inside the tire first, and then move on to the rim around the outside.